It's time to hear the story, make the connection, learn the lesson, and gain the wisdom. Are you ready? Let's get charged and be changed. The Sister Speak Brother Break Show. Conversations on grace, healing, and deliverance. This is Marcy Bush. Come on, let's journey together. Hello, and thank you for joining us for the Sister Speak Brother Break Show. Today, and I think I always say this, but I always mean it, we have a very special guest with us. Um, This is a young man that I've known for quite a while now. Um, He is a brother to me. Um, I love him. I believe in him. And I'm just so glad for where God has brought him from. And so it's a pleasure for me to be able to help him um, give give him a platform to be able to encourage someone else through what God has done in his life. So I am welcoming Lamont Gary. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me. Yes. Thank you for having me. And thank God. Mm. (laughs) Yes, indeed. Well, Mont, I know um, I've known you probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 years or something like that. Somewhere in there. We're going to say even 20. Let's just brown. You think it's been? Okay. And um, so the way I came to know you was through your sisters and brother. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we know that God has brought you through addiction. Yes, ma'am. And will you just kind of let us in? I guess we want to kind of start with the addiction and then we'll go back to maybe some of the, well, let's start at the beginning. What kind of life do you think in in the beginning as a young boy, Mm -hmm. what kind of got you on the path that ended up leading to addiction? Uh, Really, it was a lot of fear, insecurity, Mm -hmm. um, low self-esteem, um, loneliness, um, confusion, okay. um, and all of that wasn't brought on by any particular person. That was some internal stuff that, mm-hmm. that I was, I didn't even know then that I was dealing with. It was just, um, stuff that would happen. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, you know, growing up, you know, I'm the oldest of four. Okay. Um, we we do have a very close knit family, not just our immediate family, mm-hmm. but you know, my mama's side and my daddy's side as a whole, okay. <clears throat> as a whole family unit, we are a, a tight knit group of people. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when uh, you have that closeness, it's always one that feels less than or they have to do extra to be noticed or recognized Mm -hmm. and not said saying that that was totally the the situation but i was always little uh i i would get teased but at the time i know now today that it wasn't intentional or it it wasn't meant to be the catalyst for me um, wanting to do drugs later mm-hmm. on in life. Mm-hmm. Um, I have developed some forgiveness okay. in the last 1,787 days um, <clears throat> for most people in my past. Um, okay. Because in order to move forward, I have to let go mm-hmm. of certain things and yes. anger. I still deal with that. Um, hopeless, helpless, those feelings. Uh, I have to deal with those too. Um, mm-hmm. But it's people in my past that you know I would look up to and 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 mimic and and want to be like. And then okay. the older I got the more I saw where I didn't mean that much to them. Okay. Uh, I heard earlier today, you know, they're not going to love you like you love them. Mm -hmm. And uh, today I'm okay with that. But Mm -hmm. back then, I didn't understand Mm -hmm. that um, some things I'm going to have to do by myself. Right. It's going to be some days where I am disappointed. Mm-hmm. 
some days where I will be alone. Mm -hmm. um, but not having information or the people in my life who, who even had that experience they self to show me right. the right way. <clears throat> it, uh, it caused my life to be a certain way. Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, can I say this real quick? Yes, ma'am. Even while you're talking, one of the things that I'm just reminded of is how we've been taught as well. Sometimes the people in our lives just don't have the capacity. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, because everybody is fighting their own battles. Right. And everybody's interpret, everybody's response mm -hmm. to the battle. Mm -hmm is different right and so sometimes uh and i remember this came to me yesterday even while just kind of preparing for the interview and it just came up again is how sometimes the things that happened to us mm -hmm. were really nothing were not about us when it happened so the people that did whatever or didn't do whatever for you mm -hmm. Sometimes it wasn't even meant towards you. You were just affected by it. And you know what? Uh, I, I, when I look back and I and I think about a lot of the stuff where I try to pinpoint, you know, uh, like in my head, I got a large board. Okay, such such did this, mm -hmm. such such did that. Mm -hmm. And and when I honestly do my inventory and I look back, these people were doing stuff that they unconsciously mm -hmm. knew they, they they and i and i harbored those feelings mm -hmm. i harbored oh uh you 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 lied to me or i harbored the feeling of um you know you mistreated me mm -hmm. not abused mm -hmm. but you laughed at me mm -hmm. uh right along with everybody else mm -hmm. and you supposed to be my family you mm -hmm. see what i'm saying mm -hmm. but today it's like um it's not okay but I learned from that experience because yes. it's how it affected me, yes. how I want to be able to not be that person mm -hmm. in my kid's life right. or not be that same person in anybody else's life. Because you never know what little jokey joke yes. may do yes. to a person's mm -hmm. self-esteem mm -hmm. and how they see they self. Right. And they could they could find they self um caught up mm -hmm. and you don't even know it you right could, you could so it's life changing mm -hmm. and for me today it's it's different but i have to stay on top of the fact that if i if i can't express how i feel mm -hmm. if i keep pushing stuff down I keep acting as if, or I act, or I go over how I feel with a minimum of, of concern and not deal with the issue. Right. I'm setting myself up mm -hmm. um, for failure mm -hmm. to end up on the same road. I just, right. God just, right. it was a straight road mm -hmm. and God gave me a crossroad. Okay. Now, whether I went left or right, it didn't matter. Okay. Just so long as I got off of this road. Yes. And that's yes. what happened. Yes. Good. Before we go further, too, I want to take a minute to say, if you hear a little background noise, don't be distracted. I don't want you to be distracted. Um, Mont had to bring his son here with us today, and I got no problem with that. We're, we're doing real things. We are having conversations. <laughs> He's six. <laughs> So this conversation means nothing to him. All right. <laughs> so just if you hear something in the background, just keep listening. <laughs> you either got children or you got a spouse <laughs> or you got siblings or something. So you have heard noise before. Mm -hmm. Don't be distracted by it. because, And I don't want you to be. Right. Don't allow the enemy to use something that don't matter and make it big. And you know what? I it ain't big. God has you sitting in here today. Mm -hmm. Because somebody needs to be free. Okay. And so if the enemy can use 
a little click to take you off focus, mm. that's what he's going to try to do. And we ain't doing that. And see, I, I, so much of my life, that that is exactly what I allowed to happen. Um, you know, I, I smoked crack and methamphetamine and uh, marijuana and pills <clears throat> for so long. Mm -hmm. Started. Um, I had my first drink, I do believe, right around the age of 10 or 11. Okay. And back then it was, quote, unquote, uh, a fun thing to do. Okay. Because um, like I say, you know, my family is a, a, a close-knit family. Mm -hmm. Cookouts during the summer, birthday, uh, Christmas parties, anything that brought them together. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Kids will be kids. Right. The oldest will sneak and grab a beer, mm -hmm. and the ones under them would want to impress them, so we would mm -hmm. drink it with them. Now, whether the alcohol changed how I felt, I don't know. Right. I just wanted to fit in. Except you know, mm -hmm. right. Um, but as I got older, me fitting in and being accepted became harder and harder to do. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, I'm I'm the runt. Okay. I'm the oldest. Mm -hmm. Of my four brothers, I mean, you know, of my mama's four kids, my mm -hmm. dad's four kids. I'm the oldest, but I'm the smallest. Mm -hmm. I mean, my oldest sister weighs more than I do now. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I've always had to go that extra mile or do that extra thing. Mm -hmm. um, but you always felt you had felt to. I had to, right? Um, for me, um, where it. My disease thinking mm -hmm. kicked in when I was around 10. Mm -hmm. um, my dad um, would, he worked a nine to five at a mill, a uh, packing plant. Okay. Well, <clears throat> him being a college student graduate, he knew that that was not where he wanted to be. Mm -hmm. So he, in order to do better for his family, he decided to go back to school and start a career, okay. which he did. Mm -hmm. Well, while he was in school, my granddaddy brought us up. Okay. Stayed right next door. That's how we did back okay. then. You know, we wasn't uh, soft kids. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We were brought up to walk outside with no shoes on right, in the summertime. Right, right. When the sun come up, you gone all day long. When you come back, you musty and wet <laughs> because you've been to the, either the right. creek or you've been ripping around and sweating all day. Mm -hmm. And when they said you smell outside, like outside, <laughs> you yeah. smell exactly like outside. <laughs> right. But my granddaddy brought us up and he did a good job. Mm -hmm. My dad uh, doing what he know to do best, which is be the provider. Mm -hmm. He got a job as the director of interventional alcohol and drug abuse, mm -hmm. which is what led us to Aiken, South Carolina. Okay. We're from Newberry. Me being 10 years old, the runt of the family, mm -hmm. um, didn't want to move Okay. because that's what family is. They already know me. Mm -hmm. um, over here, I don't have nobody. Right. And I'm scared. Okay. But I can't say that. Okay. I can say, you know, grandma let me stay with you, auntie let me stay with you, and and it seemed like at the time um, it, that that they turned their back on me. Mm -hmm. It seemed like at the time that they didn't want me because mm -hmm. they're making me go. Right. They know I'm, I'm kicking and screaming, right. and it seemed like at the time he didn't like me because he made. See, it's all about me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so we move. And I didn't want to be here. Go to a new school, um, me being little, mm -hmm. get pushed around. Uh, people take my stuff. Okay. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. There ain't nothing I could do about it by myself. Right. Because I'm the oldest. Okay. And I'm alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. I got in you, order bro. to fit in. I got you. Mm -hmm. I got to do something. Mm -hmm. well, what do I want to I don't want to be here. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to try to get it. Create a, a way that they'll send me away. Okay. What better to do 
What better way? Well, let me back up. Everybody's family has problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Uh, my mom and dad, they went through their thing. And I didn't like my daddy already. Okay. At this time. Mm -hmm. And see, this is there, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old. Back then, for people of for people of color mm -hmm. to have nice things in their home, mm -hmm. like uh, big color TVs with remote controls, right. cable in the house, right. air condition, um, VCRs and stuff mm -hmm. of that nature, you were considered to be, you know, up, mm -hmm. you know, of the mm -hmm. upper epsilon. Right. Well, back then, you know, I would always rent horror movies, and, okay. and my brother would always rent karate flicks. Mm -hmm. And one day, my and I was so just angry, you know. Mm -hmm. And we was renting movies, and uh, my dad was like, "Why do you always rent this crazy stuff out of the blue?" Mm -hmm. And I was so teed off with him inside, and I looked dead at him. I said, "Because I'm learning how to kill you," mm -hmm. and. I believe that was a turning point for him then, mm -hmm. as well as for me, because mm -hmm. now, okay, I didn't said it out loud. Mm -hmm. Now let me think about it, mm -hmm. right? Long story short, I come to find out that he's a director of intervention alcohol and drug abuse. Mm -hmm. And now he'll go. Now, now my manipulative mind is okay. starting to develop. Okay. If I get on dope, it would make him look bad, mm. and he can't look bad in front of his coworkers and, mm -hmm. and colleagues. Cause see, everybody that that knew us thought my daddy was a lawyer. Okay. Made the mistake one day of riding the bus home, and he just happened to be going into the courtroom downtown with his briefcase. Okay. Little did they know, as you know, and me, you know, he's not a lawyer. He, mm -hmm. This is where he work at. But mm -hmm. if that's what y'all think, we're going to go with that because now it makes me look like mm -hmm. something that I'm not. Okay. But if that's what you want, mm -hmm. I'm going to give you that. Mm -hmm. But I hatched his plan mm -hmm. to get on dope so that he would be embarrassed enough okay. to send me wow. back to my grandparents' house. Okay. But it... It backfired. Okay. It didn't work. Right. Um, what happened was I started smoking marijuana, drinking alcohol, mm -hmm. and in the ninth grade started some snorting powder cocaine. Okay. And instead of it embarrassing him to where he would send me away and hide me, mm -hmm. I started to like it. Okay. And not only did he not send me um, he did, he couldn't help me, Okay. which was that, that saying, um, this disease don't care who mm. or what, or, uh, wh who, what your mama named them is, mm -hmm. what business they got right. or what they do as a profession, right. the, the, the disease of addiction is non-discriminatory. Mm -hmm. It does not care. Mm -hmm. And what happened was I started to like doing drugs, got caught up in the grips of addiction and didn't even know it. Okay. Um, so I was going to ask you, do you remember when it turned from just being a point of rebellion to you felt like you needed it? Or felt like you? Do you remember when that shift? I don't. I don't remember the place. shift, but I knew something was wrong. But I couldn't put my finger on it. When I, when I thought smoking crack was cool. Okay. I got in. How old was? How old I was 16 it? when I started smoking crack. Okay. Um, I got introduced to crack through a a, a girlfriend's mom's boyfriend. All right. And that was uh, manipulation also. Um, he couldn't smoke. He couldn't drive. He didn't have a driver's license. Mm -hmm. And I did. Um, at 16, you know, I had my driver's mm -hmm. license. He couldn't go to the crack dealer and the crack houses and, you know, 
where, where we was buying crack at with his girlfriend because she mm -hmm. asked questions. Mm -hmm. So when I would get with him, I would drive him. Okay. And he introduced me to it, and I liked it. Okay. Because at first, it was told that it was just a, another form of powder cocaine. Mm -hmm. Well, I've done that already. That ain't no big deal. Mm -hmm. Little did I know that crack cocaine would be my nemesis, okay. basically, for life. Okay. And I tried a thousand different ways to, to do it and be successful. None of it ever worked. And the only thing that was successful, well, I went and put it like this. I went, when I knew I had a problem with it was when I started uh, stealing my dad's money okay. out of his account. Out of his account? Yeah, his bank not account. Not just out there. Not, not just out there. No, the, he, didn't have a, he didn't keep enough at the house, but he kept it in a bank. And like I said, I could drive, and sometimes he would send me to the bank teller with his card. Mm. The biggest mistake he, I think he knows that he ever made was letting me know what that PIN number was. Mm -hmm. And at 16, 17 years old, I would get my brother to help me push the car out of the yard. Okay. And I would, uh, he's routine. Mm -hmm. my, my mom and daddy was routine. Mm -hmm. He would come home from work, eat, read the newspaper, watch the news, mm -hmm. go lay down in the bed, and watch more TV. Mm -hmm. My mom, come home from work, wash clothes, cook dinner, watch TV. Mm -hmm. Well, around 11 o'clock, my dad's up watching TV, mm -hmm. laying in bed. My mom goes to bed mm -hmm. at 11 o'clock, so they're both in there watching TV. 11, 30, 12 o'clock, I know my dad's asleep because mm -hmm. his back is turned. Mm -hmm. I know my mom asleep because her glasses is on and her eyes is closed. Mm -hmm. My routine was, and he kept his wallet in the same place mm -hmm. and the same all the time. I'd slide the card out, grab a handful of keys so they didn't jingle, mm -hmm. get them out of the room first, make sure my mama's eyeglasses are off, cut mm -hmm. the TV off. Me and my brother would push the car out. I'd go to the teller machine, two, $300, go to the crack house, which I'm familiar with, mm -hmm. smoke dope from 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, till 4, 30, 5 o'clock in the morning when I know they'd be back getting, getting up to get ready to go to work. Mm -hmm. Mash the gas real hard, throw it in neutral, cut it. I mean, this is at 16. And when they found out, one, I believe how they found out, he went to go and get some money out of the bank, mm -hmm. and it wasn't there. Okay. He accused her. Okay. And she accused him mm -hmm. and I think when they went and looked at the time okay which I didn't think about that mm -hmm. you know they figured it, that it was me mm -hmm. so I come home and uh, I had an ultimatum either you go to rehab mm -hmm. or excuse me we're gonna lock your black mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. I took the latter my okay. first rehab was at 17 years old okay it was a resort Okay. It didn't work. Okay. Because I went with an ulterior motive. Okay. I went to stay out of jail. Okay. And I went you. time and time so and time. So it wasn't time. to truly be over no. it. It was to avoid no. the other thing. Avoid jail. Yes. And I, I went to rehab so that my significant other wouldn't put me out. And I went to rehab so that I could kick, keep my job. And I went to rehab so that my family would leave me alone, get off my back. I went to rehab a million and one times for all the wrong reasons. Right. Do you remember how many times you went to rehab? I, I lost count because I would either be in rehab or be in a homeless shelter. Okay. See my so hang on before you. Mm -hmm. So, because help me remember now. So you were, you said 10 or 11, you started with alcohol. Right. What was the, and then when did you start with marijuana? Was marijuana the next thing? Next thing, yes. About it's a step. How, about step. how it was? About 12, maybe 13. When you started with marijuana? Yeah, hanging out with friends here. Okay. You know, trying to fit in. Okay. You know. And then I, what was I, the next step after the marijuana? Okay. Out of cocaine. And then. Was that not a big leap? I mean, even the way it, the way it did your body, the way it did your no, mind. No, no. Um, addicts, we, we progress 
So you develop that, that tolerance. Yes. Okay. All right. And so you, you don't just jump in and do powder cocaine. You just don't jump in and do drugs. You sit back and you watch and you wait and you see okay. how it do other people. Okay. And if it don't do little Johnny Lear that bad, then it can't be that bad. Okay. Now, if Susie doing it, she flip out and, and run down the street butt <laughs> naked. You probably don't want to do what she doing All or right. do as much or the way she okay. did it. Okay. So my graduation and my elevation into my disease and my drugs of choice, which is all of them. I've done all the drugs that I know of except shoot a needle. Okay. I've never shot a needle. Okay. Um, but you name it from alcohol to snorting heroin, dropping acid, pills, and, and uh, powder cocaine, crack cocaine, like I said, which, which was my nemesis. And later on in life, it was uh, crystal meth and ice. Mm -hmm. And that that was my last little bit of my okay. journey. And I thank God right now because they got this uh, that fentanyl. Mm -hmm. and, so, and I believe if I had stayed out there long enough, mm -hmm. I'd be dead. Because mm -hmm. when I do, I do it all. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, they they alcohol abuse. I believe bu abusing alcohol is buying a bottle, opening the top, and putting it back on and saving it for later. I've never been able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, I either do it all or I don't want to do none. But my problem was I can't not not do none. Okay. I didn't know how. Okay. You know, my whole life was geared around getting dope, coming up with a plan to get dope, getting more dope, mm -hmm. and having it all to myself. Okay. No matter who I had to hurt, who I had to lie to, who I had to cheat, who I had to steal from, um, it was what I did mm -hmm. and jail, you know, never been to prison, never okay. did prison time, mm -hmm. never, uh, I threw rocks at the prison. I done enough to be going, mm -hmm. but, um, oh, John, um, it, I'm going through this and okay, well, we'll send you to rehab here. Okay. You know, um, outpatient here, mm -hmm. 30 days, pro, you know, all, mm -hmm. of, all of that mm -hmm. and nothing ever. The end result was always I was still yet getting high. All right. No. Thanks so much for joining us today. If you've been blessed by today's show, feel free to let us know. And if you'd like to sow into this ministry, become a sponsor or contact us. You can reach us at 803-221-0169. Or you can email us at the SSBB show at gmail.com. Let's continue this journey together. Missed any of our past episodes? Catch up on past shows on my YouTube channel at Marcy Bush, M-A-R-C-E-Y-B-U-S-H. And be sure to subscribe so you won't miss any future episodes.